Hi folks, Astronomy Live. There's a new story out this week that SpaceX has submitted paperwork to increase the number of satellites in their Starlink constellation by 30,000. This is up from their original approval of 12,000 satellites and would bring them to a total of 42,000 satellites in this constellation, which is designed to provide high bandwidth, low latency internet to locations around the world. So this has the potential, of course, to impact both naked eye viewing and astrophotography as these satellites will dramatically increase the total number of satellites that are currently visible and in fact completely overwhelm the number of satellites that are currently visible in the evening sky. The question is where are these 30,000 satellites going because there are three orbital shells to the Starlink constellation at least as it's currently planned. Those three shells have three different altitudes but these 30,000 satellites, according to the SpaceNews.com article, are to be distributed between the two lowest shells, 328 and 580 kilometers. So because of that, this does have the potential to impact deep space astrophotography and even naked eye viewing. There is a third shell at a much higher altitude, according to Wikipedia, at 1,150 kilometers, but it will have fewer satellites. If we look at the distribution of satellites, in fact, we see that the bulk of them end up going into the lowest altitude shell at about 340 kilometers, thereabouts. The 550 kilometer shell has only 1,600 satellites by comparison, according to the original 12,000 satellite proposal. But now with a total of 42,000 satellites, those numbers are going to change quite a bit. How much? Well, it's hard to say at the moment. I haven't found the original filings yet, but if anyone has, please send me a link, post it in the comments. I'll be happy to take a detailed look at those numbers. However, we can speculate about what it's going to do by using the ratio of satellites in these two lower altitude shells and distribute those 30,000 additional satellites at that ratio. We also find that in September, SpaceX proposed to change the number of orbital planes in those shells, or at least in the 550 kilometer shell, from 24 orbital planes to 72. So we can plug in those numbers to my website, how many Starlinks will fill your sky.com. This is a website I created to simulate the number of Starlink satellites in the sky by generating basic sky charts and also by generating TLE files the orbital elements of all 30 or now a uh, total of 42,000 satellites in the Starlink constellation. So you can generate the orbital elements to load them into existing software if you want to do your own analysis or you can generate a basic sky chart which I wrote myself and you can do either here on this site. So let's go ahead and just generate a basic sky chart using those numbers. So first of all here are the default numbers that will load up if you load my website and it will generate the original 12,000 satellite proposal. Until I get more firm numbers about where these 30,000 additional satellites are going and how many orbital planes each shell will have, I'm not going to update the numbers just yet. But you can update them yourself. You can plug in your, your own numbers uh, as you desire. You can change all the various factors, including the altitude of the shells, the number of orbital planes, the inclination, so on and so forth, and most importantly, the number of satellites per orbital plane in each shell. So to get the total number of satellites in each shell, you need to multiply the number of satellites in each orbital plane by the total number of orbital planes. Okay. So if you plug in the new numbers, you find that in order to distribute them in the same ratio as the original ratio of 340 to 550 kilometer orb uh, orbital altitude shells, you will need, if you change it to 72 orbital planes per shell, you will need 95 satellites per orbital plane at the 550 kilometer shell and 72 orbital planes times 448 satellites per orbital plane in the 340 kilometer shell to create the additional satellites that are in this new proposal. As far as I can tell, they haven't changed any numbers yet for this third shell. I don't know if that third shell is really going to be used or if they're going to change it at all, but we're just going to leave those numbers alone for the moment. So I do think that they mentioned this lower shell, yes, at 328 kilometers versus 580 kilometers. That's a little bit different than my chart. We can change that too. So 
We can change the altitude of the shell as needed. And then 580, come up here, change this to 580 kilometers. So we can change those numbers as well. Now if you generate sky charts based on these numbers, here's what you see. So for my location, or location in Florida anyway, at about 8 p.m. tonight, if those satellites were all in orbit right now, this is what that would look like. Each green dot represents a Starlink satellite. Each red dot represents a naked eye bright satellite that would currently be visible. So each one of those red dots represents a current satellite that's already up there, not counting Starlink, uh, and is bright enough to be seen by naked eye. And as you can see, there would only be seven of those visible at that moment at 8 p.m. tonight from my location versus Starlink, which will have 923 satellites above the horizon with line of sight to the sun. This is only counting satellites that have line of sight to the sun because those are the ones that are going to be reflecting sunlight that you could potentially see. Now, the satellites in the lowest altitude shell, of course, have the greatest likelihood of being naked eye visible. The satellites in the two higher altitude shells, probably not as much. So if you just want to see what it will look like with just naked eye only satellites, zero out the numbers for the other two shells and just generate the numbers for the lowest altitude shell if you want to see what that'll look like. For myself though, even the higher altitude satellites are a concern because it has the, the, the potential to impact deep sky astrophotography with a camera and especially with a telescope. Now, how much it impacts this is going to depend on the time of night, the time of year, and the location. So, just so you can see a comparison of what it would have looked like with just 12,000 satellites, this is what that looks like. If you change it to the new 30,000 additional satellite proposal of 42,000 total satellites, which, again, I can't help but feel that must be a nod to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy there with 42,000 total satellites, uh, we see there is a much greater number visible there. Now, as I said, if you look at this later in the evening, you'll find that it's not as big a deal. So let's change this to 72 uh, orbital planes. Let's change the number of satellites in the uh, 550 kilometer orbital plane to 95 satellites per plane. Uh, let's change the number of orbital planes in the 340 kilometer shell. Let's change that to uh, 72. Let's change the number of satellites in that plane to 448. And I think we said these numbers were actually a little bit different, right? 328 and what was the other one? 580. So let's change that a little bit. 580. Okay, and let's say this is going to be somewhere in Florida or thereabouts. And we're going to say this is 20. This is universal time, keep that in mind. Uh, so that's going to be four hours universal time. That will make it midnight local time for me here in Florida on October 20th by universal time. Uh, so, and again, we need to change this to negative 80, actually, because longitude is east positive here. Being in Florida, this should be negative 80 for west. All right, and let's go ahead and generate that chart. So this is what it will look like at midnight. Uh, you'll need to give the website a few moments to generate all 42,000 satellites. And if you see that, there would only be one naked eye, potentially naked eye bright satellite visible and zero Starlink satellites visible. It would be a clear sky free of satellites, basically. But that's for October 20th, and that's for Florida. It's a very different situation depending on your location and the time of year. So let's say you're living at a much more northern location, like uh, 53 degrees north, which is equal to the inclination of these satellites. And that's based on the first operational Starlink mission. I don't know if the orbital uh, inclination of the various shells might change, possibly, I don't know. Um, but Let's assume for a moment it stays at 53 degrees and you live at a location 53 degrees north. Midnight for you on June 20th, right around the start of summer, will look very different. So let's see what that would look like again. Midnight local time it, during the summer from a more northern location. And there you go. Now there are a ton of satellites, over a thousand satellites visible 
This is with that full 42,000 satellite constellation, and they are completely filling your southern sky. So that's a real serious problem for any amateur astronomers who happen to be living at a more northern location, especially during the summer. In fact, you can see the constellation Orion here, front and center, and you can see a couple of satellites close to where the Orion Nebula would be. So if you're trying to take pictures of the Orion Nebula, you're probably going to be encountering a lot of satellites through the night. And already that happens as of now, thanks to geostationary satellites. It so happens that Orion is positioned such that for many of us, uh, at certain times of the year, you'll get the geostationary band of satellites going over the Orion Nebula, potentially uh, producing a lot of satellite streaks through the images that you have to deal with. But these satellites are at much lower altitudes, especially the lowest altitude shells, so they have the potential to be much brighter and much more intrusive, which is going to make things more difficult, especially when there's 42,000 of them above your head, and they could be passing through quite frequently, making it difficult to shoot images between the satellites. So yeah, there are some concerns here, but it does depend on your location. It depends on the time of year. You could be encountering thousands of satellites, potentially uh, interfering with your images, or you might be encountering no satellites at all. It all depends. But I just wanted to get this information out there, and you can check out this link in the video description, my website, howmanystarlinkswillfillyoursky.com. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.